Hi guys and welcome to the economics of entertainment. In this video we'll be discussing the devolution of money in Hollywood. So there's been a lot of talk recently about the demise of Hollywood. Before getting into that let's go back before we go forward. Hollywood as we know it today began in the early 1900s when filmmakers started moving to California to get away from the harsh patent laws that were imposed by the well-known Thomas Edison. He had a company on the East Coast that had patents over many parts of the movie making process and as such it was prohibitive for creatives to make movies in that region following these rigid guidelines. Naturally creatives found a home in Hollywood where creativity was not curtailed and they could make greater profits. Speaking of which I'd love to make some profit on this channel and this video so please help a brother out by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So in the golden age which was the 1920s to the 1960s, Hollywood could be characterized by its massive studio model. There were a few major studios, namely MGM, Paramount, Warner Brothers, RKO, and 20th Century. They controlled Hollywood in large part, and each studio had their own distinct way of presenting ideas and making film. During this period, classics such as The Wizard of Oz, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Stagecoach, and also Mr. Smith Goes to Washington were all released. Now, from the 1960s through to the 1980s, which is also known as the post-studio era, which could be characterized by a more realistic and lifelike production, popular titles included The Godfather, Taxi Driver, Alien, Grease, and Enter the Dragon. At this point in time, the what could be referred to as overproduced type of film was done away with and a newer, more relatable movie was now in fashion. Now, once again in the 80s, things started to shift. Hollywood began its obsession with blockbuster movies. Some major hits include Batman, Back to the Future, Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, Top Gun, Scarface, and Ghostbusters. At this point, it's important to note that in the US and Canada, the box office grossed just under 2 billion in 1980. In addition to the record-breaking blockbuster numbers, Hollywood was also able to milk its audiences via video cassette sales, an industry estimated to be worth around half a billion dollars in the 80s in the USA. After the 80s, the momentum continued into the 90s with films such as Toy Story, Fight Club, Titanic, Jurassic Park, and Independence Day. By the 90s, in the US and Canada, box office figures had seen a huge increase, doubling to four billion by 1990. The 1990s was also the start of the DVD era, which rendered the video cassette effectively obsolete. Filmmakers could sell a DVD a few months after the release of a movie, which meant that they could make a ridiculous amount of money from hard copy sales. This was also true in the 80s with the video cassette. In the late 90s, DVD sales were approximately 1 billion per annum in the USA. Now, positive momentum continued into the early 2000s. This was also an interesting period for Hollywood because of the advent of technology and how that would change consumer habits in the future. From 2000 to 2010, we also had some notable movies such as Gladiator, Slumdog Millionaire, Lord of the Rings, and Blood Diamond. Despite the imminent shift in consumer habits, the Hollywood box office still grossed around 7 billion in the year 2000. In addition to box office sales, DVD sales were also up in the USA to $3 billion. By the 2010s, the industry's box office figures had crossed the $10 billion mark. In addition, the US DVD market had also peaked in 2005-2006 at around $16 billion per annum and then dropped to $7 billion by 2010 which was representative of what was to come. The number has since declined to about 2 billion per year as of today, as consumers are not buying DVD, more rather they're streaming content. The demand for physical consumption has died and the replacement, which is streaming, is less of a lucrative business for all parties involved. In short, despite most streaming platforms making no profit, creators of content are not well recompensed relative to the good old days when we had big box office hits and major TV network shows. When you think about what goes into a big Hollywood movie, the numbers today simply aren't stacking up. Also, speaking about the 2010s, this was about the time when remakes and umpteen versions of the same storyline became more and more prevalent. One has to ask the question, if you're going to effectively bootleg a script and or make another version of practically the same film, what is the real incentive of an audience going physically to a cinema to watch it when they can simply wait and stream it at home? Coincidentally, this is also the period over which Hollywood started to bombard our screens with overly woke content. But I digress. When COVID hit, it accelerated a process which was already taking place. People not going to theatres and instead watching content from home. 
Platforms such as Hulu and Netflix made it such that instead of going to a theater, you could simply wait a few weeks after the release of a movie and watch it from home. Brilliant, right? This strategy has actually backfired in Hollywood as we live in a world where we are overwhelmed with options and more films being made now than ever before. As such, the appeal of going to a theater is much lower today than say 20 years ago. In addition, of late, Hollywood has tended to make movies based on agendas, wokeness and fitting a narrative instead of just making a movie that people want to see and enjoy. The industry has become one where all interests have to be aligned. And as the good old saying goes, if you're everybody's friend, you're nobody's friend. It seems as though Hollywood's money issue is truly multifaceted. People are simply less interested in going to see something in a cinema when they can see it at home, especially if they're on the fence about something. The competition from other mediums of entertainment is fierce and also the consumption of foreign content in the West is more prevalent now than ever before. More people now watch Bollywood movies in the US and the UK, for example, than ever before. And the same is true for Nollywood movies, telenovelas and other forms of foreign entertainment. Money Heist was one of the most popular series on Netflix, despite it being a Spanish speaking show, which tells you a lot about the world that we live in. We live in a more globalized world, a more competitive world, and Hollywood is losing its competitive edge. Now, as it pertains to social consciousness and wokeness, the narratives Hollywood tends to push are off-putting to many, and I think we're seeing a general backlash from the last decade of wokeness. Now, since theaters have reopened, in 2021 and 2022, box office figures in the US and Canada have tanked. They were around $4.5 billion and $7.3 billion in 2021 and 2022, respectively. The demise in revenue doesn't seem to be letting up. To give context, out of the list of all of Hollywood's major box office bombs, the overwhelming majority have been from the last two decades. Now, with the dynamic of the movie industry changing, it would be criminal not to mention the competition Hollywood has faced from other forms of media. There are, for example, more means to watch sports now than ever before. Content creation on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and OnlyFans are all competitors of Hollywood. Why, you may ask? Well, it's because they take consumers' attention, and that is the currency off of which Hollywood thrives. By the way, speaking of OnlyFans, please check my video about it here. These other mediums of entertainment give instantaneous feedback to the creator with regards to what their very bespoke audience wants to see, but at the same time requires little to no marketing per se. Hollywood, on the other hand, is stuck in a one-size-fits-all mold, which is difficult to pivot from if you're trying to now identify a new core audience from which you can potentially profit. Once upon a time, Hollywood could afford to be very selective with the films that it invested in, i.e. they could invest a lot of money in a few projects with the guarantee or the view that it was going to be profitable. Nowadays, it makes more sense to invest a little bit less in more films, i.e. have a machine gun approach, to have multiple low budget projects with the hope that one or two are highly successful. And this is because once upon a time, it was possible for a film to flop at box office, but then sell well physically via DVDs and or video cassettes. Nowadays, the economics of streaming are such that that is unlikely, especially given the fact that films are released at near enough the same time via streaming platforms as they are in movie theaters. Hollywood's business model has to adapt. But anyway, what do you guys think about the decline in income in Hollywood? What do you think the industry needs to do to reach the heights of the $10 billion per year box office days? Do you think Hollywood should just accept its fate? Do you think it makes sense to get rid of woke agendized content? Do you think there needs to be a reduction in that sort of content? Are you fed up of seeing remakes bomb at the box office? Or do you even care? Please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. I shall see you in the next one. Peace.